This is Canifis Chunk, my extreme one chunk Iron Man. We've been on quite a journey together, having already unlocked over 40 chunks. After spending 1200 hours in the Revenant Caves killing over 70,000 Revenants, I immediately rolled another, a miserable RNG grind, the Curved Bone from Mammoths. In the last episode it took me over 6500 kills to get the bone, meaning that we went dry again. Dear Lord, what a sad little life. In this episode, having already received the top and bottoms in our first 2,000 kills, we're starting off by gunning for the Elder Chaos Hood, a 1 in 1,400 item from the Elder Chaos Druids. Will I go severely over the drop rate again in search of this item? Let's find out. Welcome back to Canifis Chunk. So it is the first clip of the video and we're starting this one with over two and a half thousand Elder Chaos Druids killed. We've had one extra Elder Chaos Druid uh, top, where is that? Uh, Chaos Druids, we've had, no, we've had one extra bottoms, still no hood, about two and a half thousand killed at the moment, so we are very, very dry indeed. And we've just got this lamp, and we're going to chuck it onto Slayer, and that is level 33. So, we're getting pretty close to 1250 total now, which is pretty cool, because that'll be a total level world open for us. We also have 265 total levels to go until we have to start the last man standing grind. So, looking at it, I think it's probably unrealistic that I'm going to have to start that grind until... I unlock mining and smithing. I think once I get to that, it's probably going to be quite likely with all the other levels and stuff as well that we'll get up to 1500. But I think before then, we should be fine. I think even if I like max out my melees and stuff, um, we're not going to get anywhere close to 1500. So yeah, that is that grind is kind of predicated on getting the mining and smithing unlocked. But yeah, hopefully we get this Elder Chaos Druid hood very soon. I have been absolutely gaming this week, and still over half of you are not subscribed to the channel. Go on, reward me for channeling the Limpwer Orts and subscribe. It makes me happy. And that's all that matters. And there is 89 strength. One more until level 90, which feels like it'll be a high level to me. Uh, 187k until 98 hit points as well, so we should... Oh, I don't think we'll probably get that, what, just after we get 90 strength? So, yeah, surely we're not going to actually get to 90 strength. So how many kills am I on at the moment? Uh, I want about 2.8 thousand kills. So surely we get this one in 1.4k drop soon. How am I twice the drop rate for an item? Again? Like, what? What is my, uh, my RNG at the minute? It's so abysmal, but hopefully... We can turn that around and just get it. Please. Please. I am now up to 3,000 kill count at the Elder Chaos Druids. Can I seriously just not do a grind for once that doesn't involve me going overrate for thousands of kills on a stupidly rare item? Like, what is this? Three in a row now, essentially. Why can't I just get a skilling grind? Like, ugh. Like, I don't know, like, why can't it just give me, like, 80 thieving or something, where I can just be like, oh, this is fun, so just spend, like, two days consistently making progress towards, like, an actually manageable goal, as opposed to just blindly killing things into the abyss until, you know, finally whatever it is drops. Come on, <laughs> give me a tasteful skill. I mean, you know, I don't want something stupid. I don't want 99 prayer or nothing. Just, you know, just give me something, like, tasteful, you know? So, I am up to 3.6k KC right now for a drop that is a 1 in 1.4k, so we are still going very, very dry. Nearly up to 90 strength and 98 hit points now. What's even weirder than not getting the hood is that I'm not getting, like, any Elder Chaos Druid pieces at all. Like, 
Um, at least in the Revenants, I was kind of getting a lot of weapons, even if I wasn't getting the mace. So I had like, you know, nine scepters, five crossbows and zero maces, which is at least slightly better than what's happening now, which I've only got three pieces of Elder Chaos Druid overall. And in theory, they should be a one in about 480. So from 3.6k KC, I should have at least eight and I've only got three. So hopefully that can turn around and in turn, one of them will eventually be the hood hopefully we don't hit 4k i mean i really hope we don't hit 5k come on we deserve to not go over three times dry again surely for years now me and my family have been taking advantage of hello fresh the video you're seeing on screen right now is the last 73 boxes that i've ordered over the last 18 months and let me tell you they were worth every penny. We no longer spend our time umming and ahhing about what we fancy, coping because we eat the same dozen things on repeat. We just dive into HelloFresh's massively diverse menu of over 45 different recipes per week and choose something new and exciting every time. The meals themselves are quick to make, made easy by extremely understandable recipe cards, and delicious due to being theory crafted by the HelloFresh professionals. Oh, and guess what? It's all handily delivered to your door, so no more pain actually getting out to the supermarket to look at their empty shelves, overpriced cheese, and forget something that you really needed anyway. Head over to the link in the description and use my code FRAYAPR10 to receive 16 free meals and free dessert for life whilst your subscription is active. Thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Every single one of them bots, probably the same uh, farm, because a, a herb just spawned over there and they all went to run for it at exactly the same time. What is this? This isn't even good money. Why are there bots here? Like, this is ridiculous. This game, my god. I would just like to point out as well, I am currently down over 120,000 of the ether that we stacked up. Uh, <laughs> that's like... 15% of all the ether that I stacked from doing 72,000 revenants, like 10 or 11,000 revenants worth of kills, have got me about the same across the mammoths and the Elder Chaos Druid. So I really hope I don't go dry that much longer because we are getting through that ether stack quickly. And there is 98 hit points and 99 combat. Max combat level in some circles there. One hit point away from level 99. That seems mad, doesn't it? 90 strength, 98 hit points. We're flying on this grind. Flying. And I have just hit 3000 KC on the PC alone, plus 1.5k on mobile, so we are firmly up to 4.5k KC at the moment, which is about three times the drop rate because the hood by itself is a 1 in 1.4k, so still going dry. It's been literally thousands of kills since I've had any Elder Chaos Druid at all, and yeah, getting quite bored of this now. Uh, hopefully we get it soon. I really don't want to do another episode of me just killing these things. That would not be cool, would it? And here comes 91 strength. Absolutely flying through it. We cannot get Elder Chaos Druid drops for love nor money. We are, you know, significantly over four and a half thousand, probably getting close to five thousand Elder Chaos Druid kills without getting the hood. And I've also still not had any additional robes since. So, I don't know. I'm getting slightly stressed that they, like, broke it in an update or something because this ain't normal. Like, it's been, like, three thousand kills since I've had even a dupe. And, then, and like each and like just to get any piece should be like one in f like less than one in 500 so getting slightly stressed but hopefully it will be all right oh no we just got another elder chaos druid top at least that means that the uh that the drop rates haven't been broken by an update or something. Well, right, I wouldn't normally be paranoid about that. That makes me sound mental. But they're looking at updating this place to become some sort of low-level wilderness hotspot soon. So I worried if maybe they'd preemptively done something that had broken the rates, which 
I'll admit it sounds slightly conspiracy theory y, but there's a second Elder Chaos Druid top, and that means that we have two of each and no hoods. So hopefully we can turn a hood around and this doesn't turn into a bit of a, you know, Vigora's chain mace situation where I'm going to have like nine tops and five bottoms and still no hoods. So come on, please, just give me something. Now, as seems to be tradition on this account, um, for some reason, I, I kill about one third, I spend about one third of my time on mobile and two thirds on the PC. But for some reason, every single time I get a drop, <laughs> it tends to be on mobile. So there is the Elder Chaos Hood attained whilst on mobile. The last item we needed, total kill count, by the way, of over 5 thousand for a one in 1400 item now i've seen some people in the comments mentioning that you know oh actually if you want to get all three it's one in 2600 well we still went massively overrate whether it's 1400 or 2600 so yeah over 5000 kills dry um just checking there on the screen that I would actually keep it on death if I died, and I do, so this is a no-risk run back to the bank. And in the bank, it is a rather attractive sight. Full Elder Chaos robes on the Extreme One Chunk Iron Man account. Massive. And, f and, and good for us, because it's actually some best-in-slot gear, which is very nice indeed. And after knocking out the Elder Chaos Hood, the last thing that we need to complete this chunk is to get ourselves the Ornate Cape. So the Ornate Cape is a bit of a weird item. It's from, uh, what's it, Crack the Clue 2 or something like that. I've no idea what it's used for, but I know the way that you get it is to get a Goblin male and dig just outside the Elder Chaos Temple. So the Goblin Mail took a little bit of work to get because um, I didn't initially know where the goblins were actually located um, in my chunk. I was like, wow, do the Lumbridge ones stretch as far north as I am? And they don't. But there is a single goblin wandering around kind of the intersection um, between uh, Varrock and the desert and Lumbridge. So there was one goblin that I could kill, so I just headed over on mobile and dropped him until he dropped a goblin mail. And then after getting the goblin mail, I headed back to Ferox Enclave, ran over east to the Far uh, to uh, the Elder Chaos Temple, and uh, dug with the goblin mail in the invent, and that eventually gave us the ornate cape which is the final item that we need in the chunk we can finally roll again after going 5,000 kills to get the full elder chaos set so 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 happy to get this one knocked out i thought ah, oh, after curved bone the revenants i thought ah, oh, this one will be a bit more low-key this will be fine for one in 1400 light work surely we're surely we're due to go uh What's the opposite of dry? I think I think people in the comments uh, decided on moist. Finally, it's time for me to go moist on some drop or the other. <laughs> uh, but alas, no. We, we we this account does not go moist, only dry. But yeah, I'll see you back in the chunk picker in three, two, one. Let's go. And here we are, back in the Chunk Picker, and we're in pretty much the same boat that we are always in, which is that we do not want to get the Monastery. We do want to get Barrows. Uh, we also have Soul Wars down here now, since we unlocked the Ferox Enclave East. I just don't want to be a Wilderness Chunk anymore, so please, give me something. Just, just give me Barrows. Barrows is all we want. Come on, right. Three, two, one, let's go. Oh, what's that? Uh, Hunter spot, probably black salamanders? Yeah, so that is black salamanders. Um, well, yeah, that must be black salamanders. Okay, so that's black salamanders, and looks like there are, what, hill giants? Giant key hill giant. Okay, cool. Right, why can we... Oh, for fuck's sake. All I did... Right, I just did a 6,700 kills of mammoths down here to get the... Uh, to get the long bone and the, what's it, the curved bone. And now I've just unlocked hill giants over here, which are what? 
five times less hit points and the same drop rate of the of the long and the curved bone. Why can not I've just got and I've got to kill them anyway for the giant key? Right, brilliant. Um, okay, that it's quite an interesting little picture here though because now we've got uh, number thirteen just isolated by itself. Um, yeah, well, I guess I've got to go get a giant key, haven't I? And just double, triple check that I can't do anything else. But okay. <laughs> Why couldn't we have got this first? It would have been so much better. So this chunk that I've just unlocked is kind of like on a corner with one of, with this one, right? So my thought is I'm going to be quite sneaky and see if it works, um, which is that I'm going to just try and diagonally run it. Do you think that's kosher? I guess so. Can I get can I get onto the the one with that tree? Yeah, so, right, the chunk we're unlocking is this one. Now, if we look on the chunk map, it kind of looks like to get there, I'd have to run all the way round. But, there's nothing blocking here. <laughs> and, you know, the, the, the character is, uh, even though the animation looks like it kind of moves between tiles, it is actually only either on this tile or that tile. So, if I walk across diagonally like that, I am not in either of these two chunks, and for example, if these chunks unlocked a music track, I would not unlock those. So, I can definitely walk diagonally into it. What can we get here? So, there is a plank spawn. That is quite interesting. Ooh! A Laren's chest. Can I get Laren's keys at all? I don't think so. Do you need Wilderness Slayer? For I think you need Wilderness Slayer for Laren's chest. But, Laren's small chest is here. So, that's quite an interesting thing. If ever I unlock, what, Edgeville? I'll be able to do Wilderness Slayer, and I will be able to loot a Laren's chest. So, that could be big, because I reckon that's probably got some very good skilling resources from it. As I recall, I think it drops like 500 steel bars or something at a time, which would be a lot of smithing XP. Um, looks like someone's just been PK'd here uh, for a burning amulet and a spade, uh, unless that's a spawn for those things, but somehow I doubt it. Um, it is not. Okay, so yet yeah, there are black salamanders here as well and a hill giant. Is there any more hill giants or is it just the one? Surely it's not. Okay, there's two. Looks like there's two only. Okay, cool. And then over here is the edge of the chunk. So basically just hill giants, black salamanders and also that larynx chest which I really did not know was here. So that is quite exciting. Let's just check that if there's anything of interest up here. I doubt it. But this should be an interesting one. So I did some research on the hill giants as well. Normally, a giant's key is a 1 in 128. And what they're used for is to kill Obor, as I'm sure most of you know. So Obor is a boss which is in, I believe, the Varrock sewers. But that is also then connected to Edgeville. So, um, the Varric Sewers is in this one, sorry, and then Edgeville's over here. Um, so, when you unlock Obor, you do unlock Hill Giants by default, but you unlock them in the, the Varric Sewers, right? And in the Varric Sewers, they have a drop rate of 1 in 128, as normal. But the Hill Giants at, um, in the Wilderness, drop the, La uh, not the Larent Key, drop the Giants Key, at a rate of 1 in 64. So it's actually twice as likely to get the giant's keys here. So getting this first one shouldn't be too much of an ag to complete the chunk. Uh, oh, they dropped limpwort roots as well. That could be kind of big for me because I'm, I got quite a lot of uh, qualms from... Um, from Elder Chaos Druid. So, you know, if we unlock Herblore at some point, potentially we'll be killing a lot of hill giants for limpwort roots. Because um, getting some super strength potions would be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so it's probably looking like it would be better for me if I unlock Obor at some point to actually um, kill these hill giants instead of the ones in the Varric sewers because he's dropped them twice as likely. I mean, this looks like terrible kills per hour at the moment because I'm, uh, <laughs> um, I've run out of run energy because I just came over here. Um, but I think if I used a crossbow or something, stood in the middle and just ranged them both, that would probably work quite well for me, wouldn't it? Let's see. Is this giving me a respawn timer? 
No, not yet. Okay. Um, but yeah, so this is quite a cool unlock, actually, I think. Because if we unlock Obor one day, this chunk is going to be pretty big for us, I think. Um, we can't do the Black Salamanders for the same reason that we can't do the Swamp Lizards in Mauritania. And that's because the um, we don't have a small fishing net. So, I mean, I guess looking at our chunks, probably we'd have to unlock... It just doesn't look likely anywhere, does it? Uh, Catherby is is has one. Um, there's I know there's one in Berg de Rot from when um, Settled did it, but I think we're quite a way away from being able to get into Berg de Rot because um, you've got to do the quest. Uh, what quest is it? Uh, Nature Spirit and then plus maybe another one as well. Um, so yeah, I think that, oh yeah, he's doing such a my queue. And then I think in aid of my queue is actually when you can, can go into Berg de Rot. So yeah, that's quite a while away as well. So I don't think we're going to have that as a hunter method anytime soon. Um, but other than that, we're kind of laughing really. Um, this should be over quite quickly. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go, you know, four times drop rate for the giant key or something. But other than that, we just need to grab this giant key and then we'll be rolling again. Fun stuff. Safe to say, even without doing this optimally and optimally being just standing in the middle with a crossbow or a scepter, this is significantly faster kills per hour than it was killing the mammoth. So this would have been way better for getting our long bone and curved bone. But at least I guess we got massive melee stats from doing it at the mammoths and quite a lot of seeds and also I guess some prayer potion doses. So uh, I guess it's not all bad, but it did take two weeks. <laughs> so uh, I guess, you know, six and two threes and all that. But this would have been a lot faster. Um, but other than that, I guess the mammoths was probably slightly better on balance. Was it? I don't know. Let me know what you think. Have a good uh, source of cosmic runes, like at all. So, uh, you know, getting some of those will be cool because we want to be imbuing jewelry in the future. I'm looking at you, Rings of Dueling. Um, so, yeah, we'll want the cosmic runes at some point. So, having hill giants unlocked, which, you know, also gives us a source of prayer XP, source of limp work roots, uh, giant key. I mean, like, I am going to unlock Obor sooner or later, so just getting some giant keys ahead of time would probably be good as well. Um, so, them also being a source of cosmic runes is quite nice as well. So, yeah, just a nice NPC to have unlocked, I think, particularly here in the wilderness where the giant keys are more common. And there it is, the giant key. And we finally went under rate for something. We did that in 52 kills, so just shy just shy of going to the drop rate of 1 in 64 but finally finally under drop rate for something hopefully that means we can keep that streak going the last what three grinds going hopelessly over rate for thousands of kills was not fun but maybe we're back in the game now but that is the only task to do in this chunk so what that means is we are going back to the chunk picker fun stuff Right, so we are back in the chunk picker and we've completed the chunk here. We got the giant's key, no problem. And other than that, we're in pretty much the same boat as before. Let's avoid the monastery if we can help it and let's get barrows if we can help it. I mean, how many chunks has this been rollable for now? Uh, over 20, probably. And we still haven't got it. It, um,. Reminds me a bit of Limpwer, who obviously started in Lumbridge here and had this chunk here, which was his, uh, like, you know, first chunk you could unlock going around, you know, west to west to south. And um, didn't unlock it for over three years, I think. So hopefully we don't end up in the same boat as that and we can unlock the chunk that we want here, Barrows, for quicker than three years. Uh, but I don't think there's much we can do except hit, pick, chunk and hope for the best. Let's go. Dragon Tooth Isle. Right, is that any task for us? Yes. So, Mauritania Diary Medium. Uh, travel to Dragon Tooth Isle. Okay, right. So, that's pretty simple. Uh, we do need to get over to Port Phasmatis, though. So, that will be a ball ache. Um, but we do have a load of Acto tokens. So, that is pretty easy for us. Right. Let's go. Finally, finally, 
Not a wilderness task though. We got Dragon Tooth R, which is one that I think has been unlocked for, uh, has been unlockable for ages and ages now as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't think there's much we can do there, if anything. Oh, well, I guess the chunk picker thinks nothing. Uh, but nice to uh, nice to be back over in the Mauritania side of the map again. I must say. I remembered to grab my Ecto tokens with me to get in to Port Phasmatis. Um, but other than that, I don't actually know whether is the I think the Dragon Tooth Island boat is the the tiny little one here. Um, I've got plenty of tokens. It might does it does it cost like five hundred tokens to go there, or is it, or does it cost five hundred tokens to go there? Like however much you want, because I might just unlock that anyway as some kind of permanent unlockable. Uh, if I pay five hundred Ecto tokens, can I get unlimited trips? There we go. Right. Okay. So we can go to Dragon Tooth Isle without doing any more quests. There is our medium task. We need to unlock this chunk in the game. And here we are. So there are evergreen trees, which you can use for sap. So I, And sap's kind of like a fairly common quest item, so maybe that will help us at some point. Uh, not entirely sure. Not really very helpful to us, is it, though? It's just a load of evergreen trees that we can chop right now. I don't know. I think this is used in a couple of quests. I don't remember which quests, but... Yeah, I guess not a very interesting chunk, <laughs> but at least it's a Mauritania one. So, yeah, we've got our medium task, so we can just go and roll some more chunks, I guess. What statue is this? Statue of Saradomin. What a great likeness! Kind of looks like me, to be honest. Look look at the beard and the bald... Oh my god! It's the same guy! That's literally me! I am Saradomin. And we are back in the Chunk Picker for the third time in our... Well, not in a row, but in at least quick succession. Um, we want to avoid the monastery. We want to get barrows really, really badly. We've now got Dragon Tooth Isle, the entirely useless island. But otherwise, let's just go. Three, two, one. Pick chunk. Soul Wars. Ooh. Uh. Why isn't that? Okay, cause so, right. What's Section one. Okay, so I guess section one is what we want, isn't it? Um, right, let's save. Okay. Oh, <laughs> okay, so it looks like... Okay, right, that's not a scrollable list at least, so this at least looks fairly okay. Um, cast a crossbow bolt onyx, so... Um, right, we've got the cosmic runes, we've got the fire runes, death runes we've got... Onyx bolts, fletchings. So we need to fletch the onyx bolts, but we already have 87, so that should be fine. Um, so I'm guessing we get. We got onyx bolt tips from Revenants already, so that means we must get rune bolts from Soul Wars in some capacity. Is that big? No, because I don't have a rune crossbow. <laughs> okay, so that's not useful for us. Uh, wear a soul cave. I'm guessing that's just. A, oh, it's 70 prayer though. I can train prayer via uh, via Soul Wars, I guess. So that should be okay. Um, obtain a soul, yeah. Obtain a soul cape. Uh, uh, little creators. That's the pet. And obtain an ectoplasmator. So that's just another bible. And the pet and a mossy key. Uh, where are they? I'm guessing so. Not in actual Soul Wars. I'm guessing they're down here somewhere. Okay. Um, right, none of that's that bad. I think that's that's fairly doable for me. Uh, what we need to do is head over to Soul Wars and go and have a look. Let's go. So, at the time that I rolled that chunk, I fully did not appreciate just how good the chunk I just rolled was. Um, almost game-changing, I would say. So, not only is there the normal Soul Wars rewards, which are things like blighted food, blighted restores um blighted uh like the sacks as well to the spell sacks which are massive i mean 70 
entangle sacks for 10 zeal that's literally nothing and that's like crucial for me at callisto and the food is therefore and then like yeah obviously i can only use it in the wilderness or pvp worlds but it is huge again four super stores for 10 zeal that is like crazy essentially prayer pots per hour as long as i'm in a pvp world so that is just absolutely massive but then also when we get to the spoils of war and the loot that you can get from those truly a biblical list <laughs> of things that we either can't really get or will be very useful for us in the long run particularly in big quantities so just off the top we're looking at pure essence at sooner or later we're going to get something that triggers us to have to get the skill cape in varrock for 99 rune crafting that is going to happen sooner or later and four to six thousand pure essence at essentially a one in five rate that's crazy like that is way way faster than killing um what that npc in the slayer tower uh ghast is it and then um also way better than even mining it so that is going to be substantial for us um additionally we've got a lot of blood and death runes but we do not have a very good source at all of nature runes the only shop that's anywhere even close to us is kind of the mage arena but that is still a lot of chunk rolls away so having access to a good good amount of nature runes you know essentially 225 every six spoils of war is again pretty good for us because sooner or later we are going to be rolling the smithing chunk and being able to use nature runes to get smithing xp and also use nature runes to alk some of our um some of our high ticket items pretty cool bolts adamant bolts runite bolts like one day when we get a rune crossbow they are going to be biblical like we could make you know loads and loads and loads of like ruby bolts for example which if we unlock something like god wars dungeon and we've got a rune like well you'd get a rune crossbow from kriara would be massive again so yeah that's going to be pretty huge for us coal and mithril ore decent uh supply of smithing xp right there i'd obviously need to get to level 55 first for it but from there that again is decent smithing xp per hour um and then last but not least snapdragon and ranar and torstal seeds huge like one day we're going to need a lot of prayer pots for something right and when that day comes having hundreds of seeds uh, you know of those kinds of seeds one day will be massive um the little creator is a one in 400 so in theory we should be opening about 400 of these crates um so you know in terms of nature runes we're looking at possibly upwards of 15 to 20 thousand nature runes which is pretty massive and when you look at the pure essence as well what we're talking 5030 lots of it we're talking maybe 1.3 1.4 million pure essence which you know at kind of six seven xp per go is well over half the way to 99 rune crafting so we could easily bank 99 rune crafting in pure essence it's then totally another thing actually doing it with a totally substandard method and very likely no pouches and stuff like that but having the pure essence banked and more crucially having a method to get pure essence at a decent rate is going to be huge i mean limpwort just rolled um 88 rune crafting right and one of the biggest issues is that he's got no decent source of pure essence having to kill minotaurs for it so being able to kind of shortcut through that and get straight to the rune crafting one day when the rune crafting grind um becomes available is going to be very big for us so yeah didn't quite appreciate this at the time but uh yeah back to the live clips so just as a little bit of extra you know showing you that this is in fact an instance you can see that this is all colored right but when i go on the map it's putting me in this red zone here and you know that if i go in the red zones normally it's like black everywhere so i don't really know why they put the arena on the island at all i think it's essentially considered like set dressing to make the isle of souls look more soul warsy but we are not here it is saying we're stood here but the plugin is showing evidently that we are not stood here so yeah let's uh let's crack on with this and get back with the method shortly 
Right, what you are looking at right now is a classic game of Soul Wars using two of my own accounts. So the first account is Canafish Chunk, and what he's going to do is immediately run to the graveyard closest to me where I spawn, and that's going to be the only click that we do thus far. We then, on, on the main account, I forgot to grab a like range potion, so I grab one over there, and then we start heading towards the larger, what are they called, fragmented souls or something. Um in the middle and we're going to start blow piping them in full void as this is happening the graveyard that we went to on canafish chunk has almost been captured and we're going to go then to the middle and start capturing the the altar in the middle uh, on the altar count we're going to start killing the souls and what that is going to give us is soul fragments we're looking to get anywhere between about 24 and 32 of these so again, back to Canafish Chunk, we are just going to be stood in the middle capturing the Soul Obelisk. Uh, the whole time we're doing this, we're going to be kind of fairly intensively killing uh, the souls, using our blowpipe and collecting up the soul fragments. So as we cut back to Canafish Chunk, we have captured the Soul Obelisk and we're heading over to the other graveyard. So what you want to be doing is capturing all three points on Canafish Chunk. This is where a, quite a big amount of our points is going to come from. From about six zeal comes from this so two per one um by this point we're kind of thinking about uh how we're going to get the soul fragments from um, my main account to canafish chunk and how we're going to be doing that is via the locator orb so once we've got enough um i, I do it slightly late here because this was my first time doing it um like in this session uh, to record it for you guys so i start doing it late here but what you should be doing is spamming down to one hit point with that locator orb fairly sharpish so what we're then doing is we're going to head over to the north side of the island on canafish chunk we're going to attack the main account and as you can see we've got law and air runes in the invent and what that means is as soon as we get the kill we can telegrab the soul fragments across here avoiding having to run across that whole bridge for a second time and we then chuck those into the soul obelisk leave the game on the main account and that is all from all that we're going to get anywhere between about 13 and 15 zeal and that is a very very quick way of doing it that was about two and a half minutes so that is by far the fastest way to get zeal far 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 better than doing it in the world with everyone else so now that I've shown off the method, which uh, should equate to just over 300 zeal per hour, let's buy our first spoils of war, because why not? Let's see what our first one is. Can we get a one crate pet? That would be very exciting. So obviously from the spoils of war, the main thing that we want is the pet, because that's going to be the thing that takes the longest. Um, other than that, it doesn't really matter, we're going to get a lot of loot either way, so yeah, we're just really looking out for the pet. I don't know how often I should open these, I might do sort of every 20, something like that, um, because then that will stop me overkilling Soul Wars too much if I don't, if I uh, happen to get it early. It would be annoying to do like 100 crates, or 100 spoils of war, and then like get it on the second one, and you got 98 that have just been wasted. So, let's open this and see what we get. A dragon med helm, which I believe is quite rare. Um, but we did get the rune bolts, so what we can do with those is we can grab... Let's grab our runes, so we need cosmics and deaths and fires, potentially. Um, and then we also need our onyx bolt tips. So let's grab those. Let's see if these. this is any decent XP. Uh, no, 94. Um... But what we can do is crossbow bolts and imbue those or enchant them. So there are our onyx bolts E, which is a couple of our tasks. So we can essentially tick off our 87 magic requirement. That only popped up because I didn't write down that I had 95 already. And we have fletched the onyx bolts E, which are a best in slot for us, which give a lot of range strength, but unfortunately... We don't have a crossbow that we can use. I think we can get a bronze crossbow from the Varrock uh, range shop, archery shop. But we do not have any capacity to uh, shoot these because we would need a rune crossbow for that. Um, yeah, 
So um, essentially, I'm just going to be doing a heck of a lot of Soul Wars to get the pet and the cape. So the cape is 2,500 tokens. So at max efficiency, that should take about seven hours for me to get. No. Oh, God, longer than that. About nine-ish hours. Eight to nine hours for me to get would be the Soul Cape, which is crazy just for a cape and then we also need the ectoplasma here as well but that'll be only about one hour um and then yeah i think on rate it should be about twelve thousand tokens worth of spores of war to get the pet but as this account has proven going on rate is not as easy <laughs> as it can <laughs> as it seems right so yeah we're gonna be cracking on with soul wars and unlocking a load of stuff i'm probably gonna do the moss giants on mobile so at some point expect a clip of me getting a mossy key on mobile but yeah, let's just get stuck in. So I just ran a test of the method that I've already shown you and we were getting, I got 129 zeal in a total of 25 minutes, which equates to about 310 zeal per hour. Uh, what we're going to do now is a test of killing the boss on this account, which um, Saycase recommends because it is... Uh, like more AFK but supposedly slightly less points per hour uh, so I want to give that a go and just see how it is um, and hopefully it's all right and maybe it'll be better and you know it's like if it's like 290 zeal per hour but it's like twice as AFK then I'll probably do that so let's test it out shards in there and then do I go oh god am I going right way uh, go east okay um so the um so what you do is you chuck your soul fragments in there like you normally would and then you bomb it over to the avatar and just afk it to death with some kind of melee weapon i believe is what you do i'm not sure if i'm going to need food or not so i might grab some on the way through although this could be an issue uh no run energy although i think these healing packs give energy don't i so i just might need to grab those on the way over um the first time so that is all right assuming that this gives uh that this gives run energy let's check that out i oh, know this gives run energy. no no that doesn't <laughs> okay i'm confused now uh, all right take 10 oh my god you can't take enemy ones okay so let's just hope that this thing doesn't hit me very hard otherwise i've messed this right up so i have figured this method out what you do is you just let the um you you feed in your 40 you run over here one med pack gives you 100 percent run uh you you pot up these are basically prayer potions and supersets at the same time and then you just sit here with protect melee on afking this little fella uh you get about two to two and a half minutes afk so a game takes about five minutes and 30 and you get about 23 to 25 uh zeal so about what 260 zeal per hour so about 50 less but it is a lot less ag so i'll probably just do a mix of the two to be honest uh we're gonna need about what 15,000 zeal on rate to finish the chunk and that means that we're looking at about 60 70 hours if we start going dry again <laughs> then more than that uh, this could quite easily be a 100 hour chunk if we go dry on the pet but hopefully we won't now if there is one thing it, that i am bad at it is having patience <laughs> and so what we're going to be doing is buying 15 spoils of war and just cracking them open because it's fun so uh let's let's just get stuck in shall we nice right oh pure right so this is one of the best things about soul wars i guess pure essence i didn't really have a good method of getting pure essence before unlocking soul wars um but that is massive for me because one day we are going to roll some combination of chunks that unlocks the varok skill cape which we already have right we've got the skill cape for rune crafting in varok um, but we just don't have a training method for rune crafting yet. But as soon as we do, we're going to get absolutely cooked. But having this pure essence is going to be massive. Looks like we're going to get a decent amount of crafting XP. Some runes as well. Handy. Raw food. Ooh, nature runes. Very, very nice. Um, 
Didn't really have a good method of getting nature runes before Star Wars, but if I'm getting 170 at a time, this looks pretty good. Uh, more raw food, adamant arrows, that's pretty cool. Adamant bolts, as expected. Uh, nothing else too exciting. Ooh, raw sharks as well, very nice. I mean, we can buy those, so it's not, not huge, but... Nice to be able to get them kind of passively for something we're going to be doing anyway. Myth, ore, and coal. So that looks like that will be a decent amount of smithing XP per hour as well, potentially. Uh, we're up to 16,000 pure essence. I mean, how, I mean, how much XP do you get per pure essence? It's like 9 or something? So that's like 150,000 banked uh, runecrafting XP right there. That's not even bad. Um, rune arrows. That's cool! Nice! I couldn't get those before, and I do have a magic shortbow, so I can actually use those. That's cool. Nice. I mean, I guess we're not going to get too many, and I think the crossbow is still better, but that is definitely a decent alternative. 352 anti bolts on that one as well. Right. That's kind of massive. Ran our seed, death runes again, rune bolts, which we've already had, and more anti bolts. I'll tell you what, I need a bloody rune crossbow, like, ASAP, don't I? That's mega. Right, so it looks like the loot is potentially very, very good, um, which is nice. I'm sure I've already probably gone through this in post <laughs> uh, with people. It looks like I have most of these items already in the bank um, in some capacity, so I'll have to look at moving those. But, wowza, that is pretty cool. Okay, cool, right, how, where, how what's our pure essence stack looking like, yeah. So we only got managed to get like 100 pure essence the whole time we've had this account, but now, looks like we're going to get many, many, many thousands, possibly a white stack of this, uh, assuming the rate keeps up, but no pet in those first 15 crates, first 16 crates, um, but hopefully we get it at some point relatively soon. Now, if you guys want to see something pretty bleak and depressing that I genuinely didn't notice when this happened to me on mobile, so I was just typing to my, to my clan, talking about a film that I recently saw, you know, having a good time, and I, I don't know if you've spotted it yet. I've spotted the Ranar seed. I don't know if I've quite spotted the item beneath the Ranar seed, though. Clearly not. Because I'm just having a little chat about how much of a vibe a 2006 period piece was. But, hold on. I, I think I've seen it now. Curved bone? I killed like a hundred moss giants and got another curved bone. Why could I have not killed a hundred mammoths and got a curved bone instead of wasting genuinely like over 50 hours getting one? Ridiculous. And then we had another clip on mobile that... Again, I don't know how I didn't notice this. Let me know if you guys uh, you guys see what happened. So, I mean, normally when I'm on mobile, I'm not paying too much attention. I'm usually watching TV with my wife or whatever. So, you know, I'm not actually looking. So, you see we get a mossy key there. It pops up in the collection log. Pops up in, uh, in, in the chat. But doesn't appear on the ground. Like, I, I can't... I mean, it does, but the text doesn't from, from the ground items plugin. And I've got no idea why. So, I genuinely just didn't see that it was there. Um, you know, I, I go back to Kelly Moss Giants, no problem. And you can just see it. You can just see the silver and green of the key if you look between the big bones and the coins. But I've not seen it. Um, I'm just going about my business as usual. Um, and I, I even had to like bring up the collection log after this clip so that I could see that I actually had it because I, 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 I didn't notice until I saw all the GZs in the chat and it was actually the ooh spoilers that made me think that it might be mine because um, people quite often say that if I get collection log items and stuff because um, I'm one of the, well, sounds a bit stupid, but I'm one of the bigger YouTubers in there so, so you know quite a lot of people watch my stuff but so that was the only thing that tipped me off. And if some that person hadn't said that, I genuinely wouldn't have noticed the mossy key there. So a bit weird that it didn't show up in the ground items plugin for mobile. But there is the mossy key, collection log slot done, and another task done in the chunk. So pretty much all we need to do now is a buttload of soul wars and get 70 prayer. So um, yeah, this is us bringing up the collection log here just to take a little look and just to double check that we actually got it, which we did because it's in there right next to the giant key. Um, but yeah, all we need to get now is uh, the 70 prayer and get the little creator and then we're pretty much, oh, and obviously all the like 
bought rewards from Soul Wars, like the cape and the ectoplasmator. But aside from that, we're getting through it. So we've got some of the RNG done with the Mossy Key. Obviously not a huge grind, but still a grind nonetheless. And then I left this clip in because I wasn't sure how it worked. So someone, someone left a comment saying, oh, when you kill green dragons, you can die with a full looting bag, full invent of dragon bones. You will then spawn back in Ferox Enclave. Um, and you will then be able to grab the bones from death and then do the do the trip again. Um, so I died to um, I died to the green dragon, went over to death's uh, layer coffer whatever it is, um, and tried to retrieve the items that were in my gravestone, but couldn't get them because they were in my gravestone. So I don't know if I'm just doing this wrong and there's like a way to turn off the gravestones or something but i left this clip in just in case any of you knew how to do the death banking like that or if i'm just or if whoever commented on the last video is actually just mistaken um but yeah let me know because it would be good to get that sorted because that would speed up getting the 70 prayer by a lot and would definitely speed up getting the 99 prayer by a lot so on mobile i've started knocking out some of the prayer requirement and we're up to 550 dragon bones so by my estimate i need about 15 to 1600 dragon bones to get from 60 to 70 prayer at the ectophantus so i'm just slowly knocking that out on mobile while i can't do soul wars and then i'm doing soul wars whilst i'm on pc but 550 dragon bones was about two days work in the evening um so yeah we'll knock that out fairly quickly long before we get the uh the soul wars pet in all likelihood so yeah 70 prayer goal not too bad i'm i'm, I'm very happy <laughs> that it's not 99 because 99 would be bad okay we are back up to 600 tokens and so let's uh Let's grab ourselves some spoils of war. I'm not going to do 20 at a time. I'm going to do 10 at a time because we don't want to overspend if we don't need to. Uh, Dragon Mace, that's pretty rare. We're basically looking for Lil Creator as the only, only real chase item. Everything else is kind of surplus to requirements. Unfortunately, we didn't get it in those. It would be really nice if I could just spoon this for once, to be honest. Um... Oh, okay, let's uh, bank some of this stuff here. And we've got our final 10 crates, which we still can't open because we don't have enough bank space for them. Chuck the dragon mace in there. Bones, are you joking? Oh, I thought I could open more of these in one invent, but it's just it's just not going well, is it? Um, I was just, just trying to keep the kind of more useful stuff in there. Um, let's see how we get on now. Another Dragon Mace, you are kidding me. Um, okay, cool, right. So, we're kind of getting a picture now of what a kind of average crate looks like. And, you know, we're getting quite, like, hundreds of nature runes and, like, tens of thousands of pure essence. So, both of those are actually going to be very useful for us. The soul runes, I don't think, are ever really going to be useful. The bolts are going to be useful one day if we can get our hands on a rune crossbow. I mean, I don't know how likely that is, though. Um, and some decent smithing XP as well. Some rune or some myth or some coal. Like, that will turn into, what, tens of thousands of smithing XP? Probably, what, 60, 70 XP per one or something like that. So, yeah, that's probably about 15k XP one day, which isn't too bad. I don't think the coal quite balances it out. But I think, yeah, I think we're going to get some decent loot from this, to be honest. Right, I think I will call it there. The Elder Chaos Druids at the start of the video honestly just took so long at the start of the week. Um, but we rolled some interesting chunks, which is very exciting. Soul Wars in particular, I mean, the loot from there is just going to be biblical, right? Both kind of now, but especially in the future. Um, so I'm really, really, really happy with that. Massive shout out to the channel members, as always. Fontcest and Taufine at the Amethyst tier. Crito, Patrick Wright, Cyanscape. Cornstalk Cans and Jesse Amelian at the rune tier. 
Alpinen, Brad Norsium, Come Crumpet, Teeters, and Uber Hasu at the Legend Tier, and of course, all the Gold Tier members Avery Fields, Eddie Mayer, Shocked Thief, DJ Focus, Grimsley, Sal Nexor, Kai, Hunterman, Carl Sprouse, Ninrim, Squang, Olivet, Hazmat 83, Nilo 360, Crow Poro, Vandio Gaming, Asher Anchor, Spooky Pasta, Castman, Hannibal, and Potatis. Thank you so much to all of those guys. I hope everyone watching enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one.